first up because I am fully convinced that some of you all think I don't wear SPF and I do wear SPF but most of the time by the time I've started filming I've already done my skincare prep and it's already on and I don't really see the point in like showing it and reapplying it I'm like a one and done I'm sorry I don't like reapply my SPF multiple times throughout the day occasionally if you get me on a good day you know I might do some extra like SPF miss but it's one and done sis However, today I thought I would show up, I would show up with a couple of my current used SPFs for um, specifically when I have extremely dry or patchy irritable skin. So the first one is one I've been using for years and I'm talking even before I could afford this, okay, because this girly is a little expensive and the only reason I remember being able to purchase this is because I worked at a spa that sold Dermalogica, but it's the Dermalogica Dynamic Skin Recovery. This is an SPF 50. Um, it does not irritate my skin, and as we all know, I am like irritation central over here, um, but I also love that it feels very rich and hydrating, and it leaves your skin looking glassy, like glassy as hell. Um, yeah, but it, it's a phenomenal one, and it's from the Age Smart line, which tends to be more hydrating. You know what should we just double up today like I'll, I'll put a little pump of dynamic skin recovery on so you can see it in action and then we'll go ahead and move into the second one also white cast who this one never has a white cast and it literally just like it blends in so well that's another thing like if I have to take the time to blend you out so you're not giving me, you know, the whiteness, uh-uh, no, we don't have time for that. Um, the second one is, again, this is one I've been using for years. I got this in PR a long, long, long time ago and I have repurchased it every summer ever since. And it's the Shiseido Clear Sunscreen Stick. Now, this is very rich. It can borderline sometimes, maybe, maybe. If you have like combination normal skin, you might find this to be a little bit too emollient. Um, but if you are dry and patchy, you're, I mean, it's going to be like no problem, sis. So this is one that you literally just, I mean, throw on. You can reapply it throughout the day. I love the smell of this one. It smells so good. I haven't filmed in like two weeks because my son's been sick. So if I'm, a, if, I, if I'm a little overly energetic right now, then you know why. Anyways, that one is very easy to reapply throughout the day. And, I, and I'm talking like leisurely day, like weekend by the pool at the lake vibes. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I don't recommend just like slapping it on over your makeup, but already just look, look at the difference in my skin now compared to how I started the video. There's already a nice radiance coming from within. These actually feel very hydrating. And yeah, like I said, I mean, you know I turn red in 2.5. These do not do that to me. So the third one is at my house that I was going to mention, but it's Dermalogica Pore Screen. And that one is um, definitely lighter than both of those that I just mentioned, but I like wearing it underneath makeup. Like when I know I'm gonna do a full uh, face of makeup, that's one that I have been reaching for recently and it gives a nice like blurred effect to the skin. So Dermalogica Pore Screen was the third one, but the next product on my list, I will 10 out of 10 always apply when I want to diffuse, like diffuse, um, you know, attention away from any type of texture or dry patch that I have on my skin because it just has this really cool effect to it and it makes your skin look nice and juicy. It is the M Beauty Face Glaze. Um, I, I mean, I feel like I prep my skin with this nine times out of 10 in my videos. This stuff looks so good with just concealer, which I think is the way I'm gonna wear it today. I'm just gonna show you the very minimal way that I do this um, technique or this way or style of applying makeup. Now, a slightly affordable option would be L'Oreal Lumi Glotion. Love that one, been using it for years. Um, I'm currently out of mine and I know it's hard to get for some of you all. Like I always get a comment saying, you think it's like being discontinued or it's hard to find. I don't know why, I always see it in my drugstores, but L'Oreal Lumi Glotion is another really good option. And already we look like we have just like bathed in water. So it's really important to do these prep essentials because if you are someone with dry skin or dry patches or chronic dryness, you know that this is going to absorb 
quickly. Quite the opposite of combo oily skin where you kind of have to worry about those oils breaking through. As dry people, we're like a dry well. We have nothing. We have nothing coming to save us. So it's really important when I feel I'm extra dry, dehydrated, that I get these kind of bonus prep essentials in on my skin before I apply makeup. This next part, I'm going to need you to listen carefully to me here, okay? Because I'm gonna give you two options. One I actually just did, it should be in the video um, prior to this where I talk about some multitasking essentials and how I like to multitask with my makeup. So we're gonna talk about the base for a minute. So two ways that I like to apply my base that really kind of detracts or takes away from texture or dryness on my skin. The first is the one that I did in my previous video. I'm not gonna do it today because I wanna talk about the other um, method, but if you wanna see this in action, I literally just did this in my previous video. But I take one of my favorite medium to full coverage foundations. I'm just gonna use Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin. I think in my previous one, I used Shiseido Synchro Skin in that one. Um, and I mix it with a moisturizer. This not only adds that extra hydration, but it just kind of gives you like this perfect combination and balance of pigment and you know moisturization to the skin and uh, I, I touched on this a little bit in that video some people are like well why don't you just use a tin of moisturizer it's just different trust me like you can customize this so much better than just using a standard tin of moisturizer if you you know want a more of a sheer look you just apply a little bit more moisturizer in your formula um, if you want or need more coverage then you apply a couple extra drops or pumps of the foundation. It's just customizing to your needs. Whereas a tin of moisturizer, it's gonna be the same thing every single time. Um, so I hope that makes sense, but this is one of my favorite ways when I'm just extra dry and I just know my skin is going to be on the fritz. It's just a way that I really love balancing out and I know that it's going to make my skin look plump and juicy and quite the opposite of being dry. Okay, my next option. It's gonna seem very counterintuitive when you hear me say this out loud, but just hang in there with me. Um, so we've prepped the skin. I used a nice glowing primer uh, to you know, give me a little bit of that bonus glow from within. Now, if I really wanna take it minimal and use something that I can target apply where I can actually like apply away from my dry areas. What I'll do is I will just take concealer and use it as my foundation. Now, not a hydrating concealer as you would think or probably assume that I would recommend. Um, not even something like with the title glowy or illuminating. I actually would recommend using something that has more of a satin finish to it. Reason number one is what I call rule of balance. I talk about this a lot where you have to balance your products. If you are using all glowy, all illuminating, all hydrating products, there's gonna be no balance. You're literally gonna be a glow ball, okay? So we've got our hydration happening underneath. We've got, you know, we've got like something brewing on the skin underneath that's really gonna help us maintain that illuminated, hydrating look. Now we kind of wanna work with longevity. And so products that, um, or concealers in this case, that have a little bit more of a satin finish, have a better grip to them, they're gonna stay on, and they also help balance out what you've already laid down. So I've already laid down like three very glowy products. This is just gonna help balance it out and make it look more skin-like. I also find that satin and matte concealers with a really hydrating glowy base just look out of this world, like hyper-realistic, beautiful. The one I'm gonna use today is a new one that I finally tried, I picked up during the Sephora sale, and I know a lot of you like this, and it's the Kulfi um, Main Match Concealer. I have it in the shade Ice Ice Berry. I wore this the other day just as foundation and I was stunned, like on the floor. It looked so good. So I thought it would be a perfect example to use today. Okay, I'm gonna get in a little bit closer here so you can see this in action. Now, when I use a matte or satin finish concealer, nine times out of 10, I will use it with um, a beauty blender. Again, kind of like a rule of balance. It just helps to um, keep it from being like super full coverage, super heavy. Um, it does shear out the pigment a little bit. This is a pretty pigmented concealer and um, the way I like to apply if I'm using as my foundation obviously in the areas that have um, redness so for me 
that's around this area a little bit on the sides of my nose um, and if you are struggling with dry patches so I actually have um, you can probably see right here this is a dry patch that's just irritated and super red right now I don't place the product directly on it I kind of just let the excess work its magic um, i'll place product around it so i'll basically just use the excess of my under eye concealer here to blend into um, where the dry areas are because the more product you apply on top of or around a dry patch or a textured area the more it's just going to show so i'm just going to take uh, my beauty blender here and start blending this into the skin i'm very mad at myself that i just now I'm trying this concealer. It looked so good the other day and my skin was super irritated. I have a couple extra blemishes here and anytime you do struggle with super dry skin, I would always recommend this Target application because you just simply are able to get coverage without um, emphasizing areas that you don't want to. So yeah, I'm just Target applying here and concealing those blemishes further but also at the same time I'm not doing one full like medium coverage or heavier coverage layer all over my skin that at the end of the day is just going to accentuate everything so we got to keep things balanced around here you know oh also very random here most of you who follow me on Instagram have probably been following along closer with my journey of this like random disease doctors have been trying to figure out like what I have for six years now um, I have like these nodules that run through my body we've literally been trying to figure this out for like six years um, the closest that they could get was rheumatoid arthritis but all of my blood work was negative so it was it was very confusing turns out turns out your girl has another rare skin disorder okay so just add it to um, you know, the other basically like five, six types of dermatitis that I have, but I have something called PNGD, which also is associated with why my skin is so like red and inflamed a lot as well. Don't get me wrong. Like I've always had shitty skin, um, but this has really kind of progressed it. Um, so yeah, I have this disease called PNGD, palisading uh, neutrophilic granuloma disease or dermatitis. If you see those, you see those like nodules, they're literally everywhere. They're like everywhere. It's shocking. Is it like shocking to nobody else that you can have this mysterious disease for years and years and years and it's just not solved because you haven't met the right person? Like it is just shocking. To me i don't know where i was going with this oh yeah so um you know i have struggled with a lot of redness and irritation um in my face and especially on my neck throughout the past couple years and it's been so gratifying to find products that give me that immediate correction with the redness but that also lay very well on top of it and and don't accentuate it and some of these products that i'm mentioning here have been lifesavers for me so from one dermatitis girly to another, I thought I thought I would share the love here. Okay, beautiful, gorgeous, love it, dry patch, redness, who, you know, we're still looking very natural here. And again, I get a similar um, finish with the other method that I recommended by mixing your moisturizer with your foundation. It gives me almost uh, a similar effect. That way is a little bit more customizable, but I think they're both phenomenal. Um, when you have dry textured skin. So to finish this off, we're gonna keep things very standard. After this point, you really can kind of play around and just uh, do as you please. It, it's kind of like this very particular base that you want to master. Um, I'm just gonna use my traditional cream products here. So I'll take you through the rest of this. I'm gonna take my Tower 28 um, Sculptino and just pop that on with my beauty blender. I got a new Kaja Beauty um, cheeky stamp blush during the Sephora sale. So I thought we would go ahead and pop this on. Now, if you want like something that's never going to accentuate dryness, cheeky stamp. Cheeky stamp blushes are almost like this serum, beautiful, I, I don't know. I don't know how, to, they're very angelic and serum-like. And so I would highly recommend Kaja Cheeky Stamp, but I got the shade Saucy, which I've been wanting to try forever. I finally used Duck Koi and Saucy was next on my list to try. 
Okay, let's take a little bit of Saucy here. This one is a little bit deeper than Koi and definitely more of a rosy tone. Koi had this um, almost like a terracotta vibe to it. So this is essentially, um, I don't know, it's like a warm rose. Do you see that? I don't know why nothing is wanting to stick to that part of my face. There's like, <laughs> it's like I've had a piece of tape there and, or like I just got something waxed there. Nothing is wanting to stick to it. What is that? Why is, is there something on my face? Oh, I know what that is. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to show you a little hack here. Okay. So this is actually where my son scratched me a couple weeks ago and I guess like something's just not sticking to it. So I'm going to take a little bit of that Colfi concealer and actually mix the blush in with it so I can like counter like act where that's not wanting to stick. I don't know if that made any sense, but if you're ever having trouble with something like sticking or appearing more cohesive, then try this. Like just mix your concealer or your foundation in with your blush or your bronzer or whatever it is that's not sticking. Kind of help even things out. Also something I'll do to keep things moderately hydrated, but also kind of set the rest of my skin is I'll take my damp beauty blender and just whatever powder I have, I'm using my Estee Lauder Double Wear, give it a little sweep, a little swipe, and then just press into my skin. Um, it's really not going to tone down the glow that much, but I feel like it's enough to where you're acceptable out in public. You know what I mean? Like just kind of gives you a little bit more of a soft finish, you know, going in and over powdering with a brush. I don't know if this is just me, but one thing that I absolutely hate doing, and it's probably because my eyelids are super dry 90% of the time, but I hate wearing eyeshadow when I have crusty, dusty skin. Like if my eye, you know, has got the patch on it, most of the time I don't wear eyeshadow um, at all, but um, if I do, it's something creamy and something liquid. So I thought I would throw on a little bit of my Gen C Mixed Media. This is in the shade Plush number two. It is such a pretty, just sheer fluid like brown. And I might sweep a little bit of golden bronze um, from Bobbi Brown over the top of it. I mean, I thought, Let's go ahead and go out with a bang. Might as well finish the rest of this look up, even though it's kind of irrelevant. I really just wanted to focus on the base, but why not? Here we are. This is such a pretty brown. I love it. Okay, let's sweep a little bit of golden bronze over the top just for a nice sheer wash. Oh yeah, this will look good. I finally got my hands on the YSL Lash Clash. And this is the brown one. So um, this brown to me is like very red. It's very intriguing. I've already used this and it's good, is it to die for? Not exactly, but I do like it. I mean, I, I think it gives a soft effect to the lashes. I think with most mascaras and my preference, once it dries out a bit more, I'll like it even more. Um, but let's just, let's finish this off. Let's do a little milk chocolate eye moment. I'm gonna throw a quick um, bit of liner on. This is Dress of the 90s by Sephora Collection. Okay, and then I am going to use the new Merit Lip Jelly in Maraschino. And by the way, yes, I did cut my hair. And you know, it really doesn't look that much different. I just feel like when I have long hair, I'm just, after it goes past my shoulders, I'm just scraggly. Like I just don't have thick hair, so the longer it gets, the thinner it looks. Um, so yeah, she's back to kind of like, you know, mid-length bob. Um, but I'm gonna use Lip Jelly. This is a very comfortable formula. The color is nothing stunning. It is nothing 
that is crazy. It is very much a pH adjusting lip color, but these feel so like hydrating on. I absolutely do love the formula and they feel even more comfortable than the original Merit lip oils. So I will say if you're looking for something very comfortable and I mean, it's pretty like look at it. I mean, she's pretty. And honestly, if you're a Merit girly anyways, I think you'll, you'll be a fan because it's just, I mean, it's them. It's sheer, it's comfortable. Like sheer and comfortable, that's, that's the Merit way. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like if you are a fan of their stuff, then you will, you'll probably like it. Okay, so this is it. Really the main focus of this video was the first half. I just, I finished this up because I mean, why not? Like here we are, let's do it. Um, but yeah, this is just kind of like my foolproof way. Anytime I have dry patches, eczema, dermatitis happening, flare ups, where I just feel like I get a super hydrated look no matter what. You could implement some of these techniques, you could implement some of the products, you could also swap the products out if you know there are ones that work better for you or things you just seem to gravitate towards when, when your skin's acting up, then by all means, reach for those. These are just some examples I wanted to um, feature today. So I hope you enjoyed seeing some of these in action. Um, I have another one coming up. I wanted to talk about some of my favorite beauty products that I don't have to set that I can just literally throw on and forget. Um, so if that's a topic you think you'll be interested in, I have that kind of on like my brainstorming board. So yeah, that's what we got cooking on the schedule here. Um, I hope you enjoyed and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye.